Yeah, perfect. Um, can you guys hear me properly now? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay. So sorry, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Uh, this is just like acting up. I have no idea what's up. Um, yeah. So I think I'll just start everything all over. So basically, today we're just gonna be looking at um the intermediate uh plotting um following for uh, a tutorial that we actually had uh last week in terms of the introduction to uh to graphical plotting. Um, so basically what we're going to be looking at today is just going to be intermediate plotting, which is actually divided into uh, three components or three concepts rather. Uh, so which means that the first one I will really type here is uh, it's going to be continuous data. And we're going to be spending quite a lot of time um, on this continuous data, uh, trying to explore different types of, of graphical plotting, plotting uh, that actually exist within, um, uh, within this, uh, this, this, this component. And as we're going, I'm just going Gonna be, I'm just gonna try to introduce as much data frames as, as I possibly can because today we're not gonna be using the COVID 19 data as it might not be uh, quite relevant to actually give you as um, the type of insights that you would actually want to get on, on different on different plots um, for, for this tutorial. And we're also gonna be looking at uh, discrete data and a little bit of um, miscellaneous um, um, options, but this one. I'm just a little bit skeptical in terms of whether I should share with you guys or not, because it might not uh, really, uh, really apply, because it's a little bit um, okay, you know, on the academia side, more of like research and so on. But for interest sake, uh, you could actually go go on and just read more um, about 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 this about this type. And as I'm going, I might I might be I might be introducing um, different different statistical distribution. So I'm not so sure your your about your statistical background, but if I introduce um, a, a distribution, but I'll try to explain as much as I can by on in terms of different distributions so that I might that I will introduce as we go in with the whole uh, with the whole concept. And just for interest sake, if you see something that you're not really familiar with, uh, you can stop me along the way and just ask me as much questions as you can. Um, or rather, if you if you um, Watching this recording, you could just maybe just find out more and like more um, on this on these distributions because they're quite they're quite important and they're very very um, they're they're used now in in, in in a lot of corporations. So looking at the this at the continuous um, at the continuous data, there are different uh, concepts that actually falls within here within within the continuous data, or rather the, there are different plots that actually. I exist within within the continuous data. Where I'm just gonna try and name a couple of them that we're just gonna be going um, on them a bit by bit and just trying to, to see different examples that we could actually um, find from this. So the first one will be uh, multiple multiple data sets in one plot. You see how Aris keeps on giving me suggestions and just gonna put it so that it just identifies it as a uh, as a comment. We went, we, we did a little bit of this on on our last tutorial, where we plot a couple of um of of, of, of of plots or a couple of graphs on one on one plot. And we're just gonna go into this in a little bit of more detail. And the second one would be uh, the error bars. So every time, maybe when you're actually plotting different figures on a scatter plot, you might want to actually try to understand uh, what are the error margins that are actually behind a specific point that you actually want. So you could actually plot different error margins on this, and and what so and what so not. But we're actually going to be going through it in more detail. And the third one would be um, adding noise, adding noise, or what they call it, call it um, cheetah. Yeah. Jitter. So this is more interesting as well because you find out a lot of this uh, jitter on, on on data mining, right? So uh, noise data is more of um, if I could put it this way, noise data is more of like the data that is that is not really really wanted. So that is not really informatic uh, when you actually put in uh, your your data. But every now and then you might actually want to understand from that. From that specific data plot that you have actually um, that you have actually plot, you will want to understand what is the noise behind that specific uh, plot that you have actually are uh, trying to actually show from a statistical point of view. 
but if nonetheless we're actually going to go into more detail on this just to explain to you how better what is it about and what is it actually used for and the fourth one that we're going to go to is going to be multiple multiple graphs multiple graphs in one image so this is more or less the same as your multiple data set in one plot but then it's going to be multiple graphs all in one place. Maybe we're having um, a box plot plus a scatter plot, all plotting it all in one um, in, in, in one image. Uh, the fifth one would be um, density plot. This is more the interesting one. I like this one more. Uh, other one would be um, uh, pairwise relationship. Pairwise relationship. Uh, so this one is actually used where when we have um, like a really really big data set, and we actually want to we want to actually show that data set in actually one plot. But then um, on one graph, it might not it might not be as feasible as we actually want it to uh, to look. So we're actually going to be plotting small small graphs um on, on one on one plot the seventh one that we're gonna go through is gonna be um uh, shaded regions but then this one you use it most of the time when probably when you're doing um a linear modeling uh you know when you when it comes to linear modeling you might want to actually uh, plot a specific um a specific, uh, you might actually want to shade a specific block uh, to represent it better, i.e. probably maybe when you're looking at your normal distribution, right? Within your normal distribution, um, let me just try to see if I can find this on the net just to show you better. Uh, distribution. Uh, yeah, shaded normal distribution. Yeah, so basically your shaded plots probably if you want to plot a normal distribution just to actually get uh, this, uh, these colors on the side depending on the specific presence that you actually want to represent. Uh, that's when you're going to be using your, your shaded plot. So it comes in handy every now and then if maybe you, you are performing different statistical tests. So we're actually going to go um, in more detail as, uh, on this as well. Probably going to go, I want to do a simple example and then we're going to do a little bit of a complicated example to see how we could actually maybe get um, the results which is more or less the same as this one. And um, another one is just going to be um, how to plot different surfaces. Uh, plotting uh, different, different surfaces. So without wasting any time, I'll just we'll just go through the first one, which is gonna be the multiple data sets in one plot. Right. Like I said, I'm just gonna yeah, I'm just gonna be going pure statistics. I'm just gonna be trying by all, by my level best to introduce as much um, as much distributions as I, I could possibly can. And if you probably get on a, um, a distribution that you don't might not really understand better, um, you could just search on the internet what that is. But I'll try to explain it as much as I can. Uh, different distributions. So the first distribution that we're gonna um, look at now is gonna be the, your normal, uh, your normal one. Let in, I'm just gonna be like X. We're gonna give it a uh, R normal. We did this last distribution. Uh, R normal. Uh, we're in. You're gonna get the number of um, observations. This is gonna be the top number of observations we're looking for. And uh, we're going to give a standard deviation of equals to probably six. Um, and we're going to give it a mean uh, of suggestions now, a mean of 20. I'm going to give it a mean of 20. I'm just going to run this. So this is what it actually do. It, 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 it actually randomizes different um, different numbers between 
uh, one and twelve in terms of in terms of the number of observational regions looking for, and then we're in we have a, 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 a assigned a standard deviation of six and a mean of and, and a mean of twenty, and then we're gonna do another one within Y or be assigned to um, just make it a little bit complicated three uh, multiplied by X, which is the you know, previous um, which is gonna be the our uh, previous um, function. So rating we'll see two point zero uh, plus random normal random normal yeah random uh make it a little bit different from that ten the deviation which is gonna be equals to you see Three and the mean of uh, right. So I've introduced. This one properly. So it's this one in message here in the one longer object length is not multiple of object length. I mean, that's fine. But it's rank to define. Um, so now I've actually uh, given you guys like two different uh, data frames or rather um, formulas that we're going to try to plot um, in, in, in one graph all, all, 